Having proper bed adhesion is incredibly important to the success of any 3D print, and that's why we've touched on it quite a few times on this channel. Even with a very dialed in machine and settings that should be good to go for a material, it's not unlikely that every now and then you will run into issues with a part. And some materials like nylon, polycarbonate, and ABS to name a few are much more prone to warping than say something like PLA or PETG. But there are other things as far as the geometries of the part that can play a factor in its ability or difficulty in being printed. Something with a very small surface area or a very large part is also going to be much more difficult to print and you will have to really ensure that your printer is dialed in to be able to print those successfully. In my previous video that I made on skirts, brims, and rafts, I mentioned that I often will use brims when I'm printing with a higher temp material or a material that just doesn't have a whole lot of surface area. It just helps to give the print a bit more bite to your build plate, especially when I'm printing functional parts. And when you're in a pinch, brims can definitely be a quick thing to throw onto your part and again, have the print print successfully, but they're not perfect. And when you're using brims, you don't exactly have a whole lot of control other than do you want the brim on the inside, outside, inside and outside? How wide do you want the brim? And how much of a gap do you want from your part and the actual brim itself? Recently, I've started playing around with something called mouse ears or lily pads. Those are the two names that I've heard them called over the years. And they're essentially small discs that you can place anywhere on your part that act like a brim, but you can specify the size and exactly where you want them. So you've just got much more control over them than using something like a brim, and they have been great. In this video, I'm going to emphasize mostly on Prusa Slicer, but I will also show a brief method of how you can do this in Cura and really how you can accomplish this in any slicer that exists with the ultimate goal of giving you another option in your bag of tools to hopefully help you with a troublesome model or just when you're printing with a more uh, warp prone material to have a bit more success. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right to today's video. Starting off in Prusa Slicer, you'll need to import your model. I'm going to be printing out the front faceplate of the Stealth Burner for an upcoming uh, LDO Voron Switchwire build I'll be doing. And as you can see here, it barely fits on the Voron 0.1 bed. It actually doesn't fit when it's imported. I have to angle it at sort of a 45 degree. And then I also have to sort of shimmy it around on the bed to even get it to fit. And this is gonna be printed out in ABS. So it is more prone to warping. And that is why it makes a great candidate for using these lily pads or these mouse ears. Now that I've got it positioned to where it actually fits within the bed, I want to show you guys, you know, what it would look like if you printed with your brim. So with the brim, as I mentioned, you don't have a whole lot of options. You've got either outer brim, inner brim, or outer and inner, as well as the brim width and the brim uh, separation distance. Slicing this up, initially I had it at 10 millimeters, which is probably overkill and it definitely doesn't fit on the bed. So I go ahead and size it down to five millimeters to still just kind of show you again that with the brim, as we expect, it's going to be on the entire outer portion of this part. In all honesty, I don't actually need a brim on all of the parts. I just wanted it towards the top where it's kind of thinner and there's not a lot of surface area and maybe down towards the bottom edges that are sticking out just a little bit to the left and the right. The whole side walls I don't need and it's just going to take up extra material and mean I have to clean up a little bit more when the print comes off of the build plate. Next, let's take a look at the mouse ear method. We'll need to start off with right clicking on our part, going down to add part and selecting the cylinder option, which will then populate our work area with a cylinder object that we can move around and place as needed. We're going to want to resize this. I recommend going with the height that you're using for your layers. Just a single layer seems to work best for me. And in this case, I'm going to be printing with a 0.2 layer height as well as a 0.2 first layer height. So ultimately that's what I want the cylinder to be as far as its height goes. To scale the cylinder, we'll first need to make sure that it is selected and just it is selected. And then if we go down to the part manipulation under size, if we type 0.2 or the Z's at, it'll actually scale everything in relationally to each other. And so we need to first click the lock button, 
to unlock those values. And now when we type in 0.2, it will make sure that the Z is 0.2, but it won't touch the X or the Y values. You might be noticing that the part is now in the air, but if we go down under the part manipulation on the position section, on the far right, there is a drop to bed button and clicking that will bring down the shape to the bed and make sure it is nice and flush with the bed surface. All that's left to do now is to copy and paste this object and place them where you need them. Just control C and control V on the keyboard will copy those. I'm going to do three on the top and then one on each of sort of the legs of this part that are sticking out on the bottom. And as far as how to position them, it's really going to depend on the part and you know what you need. But I roughly put these shapes like half way into the object but there's not exactly a right or wrong and again depending on your part and depending on what you need to avoid having these little mouse ears go into you know you can decide that for yourself once you've got them positioned and you slice up everything as you can see here we've got these now that are on the first layer and once the first layer passes the second layer it starts to build on top of it and it's just this initial little shape that's going to help with trying to keep this part from wanting to warp away from the bed. I've been playing around with these quite a bit lately and I've really enjoyed using them just because again, I, I like having a certain level of control over the parts that I'm printing, especially functional parts. If they're not functional, then sometimes I don't really mind as much, but yeah, when they're functional, I really, really like to be a bit of a stickler as far as how I print them out. And as you can see here, once the parts have printed, I just went around and tore off the mouse ears with that sounds bad i just <laughs> i just tore off the lily pads with my hands and then i grabbed a deburring tool and went around them to just sort of clean everything up and so Aside from just more warp prone parts, I've also been using them on some just larger parts I've been printing. This was a PETG part I needed to print recently and it took up such a big portion of the bed and it's a functional part. And so having these on the corners really helped me to make sure those corners weren't gonna warp and that this part would be usable for its intended application. During this past week's live stream, one of my patrons let me know there is a plugin in Cura that allows you to do something similar. So we will quickly run through that. In Cura, if you click on the Marketplace button in the top right hand corner, you will have access to sort of their plugin store, if you will. And if you scroll down, what you're looking for is the Tabs Anti Warping plugin. It's just a blue cube with four red circles around it. Clicking on that will open it up. And then if you click Install, it will install it to your Cura. You will need to then reboot Cura for it to activate. Using the same exact model here, once you click on your imported model on the bottom left of the toolbar, you'll now see the tab anti-warping button. And there's a couple options like size, XY distance, and number of layers, as well as define as capsule. It essentially works the same way. Once you click on your model and then click on that, you can just click around and it will add these little disks. You will need to make sure you have enable support brim enabled within Cura. Otherwise, these will not work correctly. And if you scroll down under your support section, you would see it there. If you don't see it there, then under the support gray bar, there's a little settings button that'll pop up if you highlight over it. And if you search for support brim, you'll see the enable support brim option. Make sure that is checked. If you don't have that checked before you slice with these little disks or these little tab helpers, then they will not generate correctly. Once you enable it, you can slice up the model and sort of similar to what we saw in Prusa Slicer, you've now got these disks on the first layer of your print. The only other option is the define as capsule option. Having that enabled instead of generating flat rings will generate rings that have sort of a lip on them. And the purpose for that is supposed to make it easier to grab them with your hand afterwards or your tool or whatever to then tear them off. Personally, I've never had any issues just using the flat rings. They've worked great for me, but if for some reason you are having an issue, then this might be something that you'll want to consider or try using. Regardless of whether your slicer has a plugin or whether your slicer has the option to create something like a cylinder, any slicer can use this sort of technique. You just need to have a model that you can import. And so I did create a a cylinder, a polygon, an octagon, as well as a heart that you can download if you don't, again, have Prusa Slicer or Cura with the plugin and you want to sort of use these. I played around a little bit with the hearts and I think that they probably should be condensed a little bit, but they were kind of more for fun. The cylinder is the primary one that I've been using and I'll place links in the description if you don't have or want to generate your own cylinder to the cylinder that you can then
then download and use them in whatever slicer it is that you're using to sort of follow these techniques and generate the mouse ears or the lily pads for your own. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that you have a much better understanding of what these mouse ears or lily pads are and how to use them and when maybe you would want to use them. Let me know in the comments down below if this is something that you've already been using. I don't actually know a ton of people that use these. I know a handful, but I think that after me using them now, I am definitely going to be using these much more often than brims when I need to use them because again, I just love being able to specify exactly where I want them. And if you have been using them, let me know in the comments down below what you're calling them. Because again, I've heard mouse ears and lily pads and I think I like lily pads more than mouse ears, but I think tabs also could be a very appropriate naming for them other than those other two. So on that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you, allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from Oddbot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.